Hi, I'm Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICHKSA. I am going to talk about epithelial neoplasms of the ovary, mucinous carcinoma. General background. Mucinous carcinomas account for less than 15% of all mucinous ovarian neoplasms and less than 10% of all ovarian epithelial carcinomas. Most mucinous carcinomas are confined to the ovary at presentation and predominantly unilateral. However, advanced stage disease is very rare. They are bilateral in less than 10% of cases. The mean age is 45 years, predominantly reproductive age women at presentation. Patients are either asymptomatic or present with abdominal enlargement or pain, and less frequently with changes in bowel or bladder function. In contrast to serous carcinomas, CA125 may not be markedly elevated. Mucinous carcinomas commonly show KRAS and TP53 mutations. Unlike high-grade serous carcinoma, they show no association with germline or somatic BRCA1, BRCA2 mutations. Prognosis depends on the presence of destructive stromal invasion and stage of disease. Gross appearance. Mucinous carcinomas are predominantly unilateral in more than 90% of cases and often large more than 10 cm. Complex mass shows cysts filled with mucoid material admixed with solid soft areas with a similarly mucoid cut surface. Surface involvement is typically absent, but large tumors often exhibit rupture and or adhesions. Microscopic features. Invasive carcinoma can be diagnosed based on two different patterns of invasion, expensile confluent glandular pattern, infiltrative destructive pattern, less common. These two patterns may coexist in a single tumor. Prognostically, mucinous carcinomas associated with infiltrative stromal invasion do worse than broad-based expensile invasion. Microscopic features of mucinous carcinoma with expensile confluent pattern of invasion. It is recognized by marked glandular crowding and papillary fossae with little or no intervening stroma, creating a complex architectural appearance and labyrinthine or cribriform patterns. There are no obvious areas of stromal invasion or desmoplastic reaction characteristic of infiltrative invasion. Mucinous carcinoma with expensile confluent pattern of invasion. The tumor has a complex confluent villoglandular pattern, a confluent cribriform pattern, high-grade nuclear features. All of these foci of invasion lack 
infiltrative destructive borders and a desmoplastic stroma characteristic of infiltrative invasion. Microscopic features of mucinous carcinoma with infiltrative destructive pattern of invasion. Malignant glands, nests, and individual cells irregularly infiltrate ovarian stroma with desmoplastic stroma reaction. Prognostically, mucinous carcinomas associated with infiltrative stromal invasion do worse than broad-based expensile invasion. Microscopic features of mucinous carcinoma The glands, cribriform, and papillary fossae are lined by neoplastic cells. The neoplastic cells are cytologically malignant and show moderate to severe cytologic atibia, that is nuclear enlargement and hypochromasia, as well as prominent nucleoli. This photo shows a vascular invasion in a mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma of the ovary. Most mucinous carcinomas of the ovary, 80% of cases, show a continuum from benign to borderline to frankly malignant areas. This image shows intramucosal carcinoma on one side of the cyst wall and a single layer of benign intestinal type mucinous epithelium on the other side. This image shows borderline areas on one side of the cyst wall and intramucosal carcinoma on the other side of the cyst wall. The presence of mucinous cyst adenoma and mucinous borderline tumor favors the primary ovarian mucinous carcinomas versus metastatic mucinous carcinomas. Mural nodules. Mucinous ovarian tumors, borderline and malignant, sometimes show single or multiple discrete mural nodules that range in size from microscopic to several centimeters. The mural nodules may be histologically benign reactive sarcoma like mural nodules or malignant mural nodules which are either sarcomatous nodules or carcinomatous nodules. Different types of mural nodules may be seen in a given tumor and individual nodules may show mixed morphological features. Benign reactive sarcoma-like nodule. It is composed of mononuclear cells and osteoclast-like giant cells. Sarcoma-like nodules may occur in benign, borderline, or malignant mucinous tumors. The presence of sarcoma-like nodules is not of prognostic significance. Malignant mural nodule. These images show a nodule of anaplastic carcinoma in a mucinous carcinoma of the ovary. The presence of anaplastic carcinomatous mural nodules in organ confined stage 1 tumors does not appear to worsen the prognosis. Differential diagnosis. Metastatic mucinous adenocarcinoma to the ovary should always be strongly considered when evaluating an ovarian mucinous carcinoma. Features favoring primary ovarian carcinoma versus metastasis are unilaterality, 
size more than 10 cm, smooth external surface that is absent of ovarian surface involvement, mural nodules, accompanying benign and or mucinous borderline areas, teratoma, adenofibroma, endometriosis or brain tumor, Expensile pattern of invasion that is absent destructive stromal invasion, complex papillary pattern, microscopic cystic glands, necrotic luminal debris, absence of a history of a primary mucinous carcinoma at another site, multinodularity, Hyla lymphovascular invasion, extra ovarian disease, patchy positivity and heterogeneous distribution for cytokeratin 20 and CDX2, negativity for SAT B2, the vast majority of tumors. It is important to note that a high index of clinical suspicion is recommended as distinction based on pathology alone is not possible in many cases. Most of the ovarian mucinous tumors associated with pseudomyxoma peritoni are metastasis from low-grade appendicillin mucinous neoplasms. Patients with primary ovarian mucinous neoplasms have a better prognosis and usually do not require adjuvant chemotherapy, whereas patients with metastatic mucinous tumors involving the ovary have a poor prognosis and may need systemic treatment. Immunohistochemistry. Primary ovarian mucinous carcinoma shows diffuse and strong cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin 7, patchy cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin 20, patchy nuclear positivity for PAX-8, CDX-2, and negativity for SAT-B2. Metastatic colorectal carcinoma and low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm show diffuse and strong cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin-20. Negativity for cytokeratin 7 and PAX 8. Strong and diffuse nuclear positivity for CDX2. Strong and diffuse nuclear positivity for SADB2. Please note that cytokeratin 7 and SADB2 are highly sensitive and specific for distinguishing primary ovarian mucinous tumors from colorectal and appendiceal metastasis. Please remember that ovarian mucinous carcinomas show gastrointestinal differentiation and are positive for CEA and CK7. CK20 and CDX2 are positive in most cases, but typically with patchy and heterogeneous distribution. As an important caveat, a mucinous tumor arising in a teratoma will show an immunophenotype identical to primary lower gastrointestinal tumors. Higher SAD B2 expression is associated with 
better prognosis and response to chemotherapy in metastatic colorectal carcinomas. Cytomorphology. Mucinous carcinoma of the ovary infrequently metastasizes to the serosal cavities. Tumor cells have nonspecific features such as papillary groups, formation of true glandular acina structures, dissociated cells, some with signet ring morphology and occasional binucleation or multinucleation. It is evident in poorly differentiated tumors. Cell poles, cells with small cytoplasmic vacuoles. Pseudomyxoma peritonei, gelatinous ascites. It is a clinical term, not a histologic diagnosis, referring to intraperitoneal accumulation of mucin, secondary to mucinous neoplasia. It has been traditionally attributed to ruptured ovarian mucinous tumors, or most commonly ruptured appendiceal mucinous neoplasia. These two photos show a low cellularity in the background of abundant mucin, low-grade disease, adenomucinosis. It is an extremely well-differentiated pseudomyxoma peritonei containing benign-looking columnar cells. High-grade mucinous carcinoma peritonei high-grade peritoneal mucinous neoplasia, mucinous carcinomatosis showing malignant cells with cribriform architecture and prominent nuclear atibia. Treatment includes cytoreductive surgery with hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, hybrid for low-grade disease, and systemic chemotherapy for high-grade disease. Treatment and prognosis. Most ovarian mucinous carcinomas are organ-confined, stage 1 at the time of presentation. That is no destructive stromal invasion and have excellent prognosis. The optimum treatment for stage 1 organ confined consists of unilateral salbingo or oophorectomy. Patients with extra ovarian disease at the time of diagnosis usually succumb to their tumors. Chemotherapy appears to be less effective against mucinous carcinoma than serous carcinoma. Recurrences do not respond well to chemotherapy or radiation. The five-year survival rates are as follows. 83% for stage 1. 55% for stage 2, 21% for stage 3, 9% for stage 4. A coexisting mucinous neoplasm in the appendix must be excluded, especially if the tumor is bilateral or if there is pseudomyxoma peritonei. Appendectomy and or abdominal exploration may be indicated to find a possible source of metastasis. A prolonged follow-up is necessary to exclude the development of tumor in the contralateral ovary. These are the references. Thank you.